that in one word, Islam is a religion of total submission to God's will. So what he was teaching was Islam. Maybe he himself didn't know the term Islam, but that is the definition he's giving of Islam. So the teaching of Moses was Islam, not Judaism. Therefore Allah says, only Islam is a religion which is acceptable in my sight. No such thing as Judaism or Christianity. Where did Christianity come from? The word Christianity, where did it originate? Did Jesus give his religion, says my religion is Christianity? Did he say I'm the Christ? If you know that Christ is a, is a Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah. Messiah in Arabic, Messiah, means the anointed one. Priests and kings were anointed in consecration to their office. That from now on, you are my high priest. From now on, you are our king. So the Hebrew word for that is Messiah, one who is anointed. The Greek word for anointed is Christos. But Christos is a bit too long. So they lopped off the os and left with Christ. It is a Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah. Jesus never heard the term. He didn't hear the word Christ in his lifetime. <laughs> Believe me. He didn't hear the word Christianity in his lifetime. It was unheard. It's a later on creation. And if we meet Jesus in his second coming, and if we have the good fortune of asking him, Oh Jesus, what is your religion? If he said Christianity, we can ask him further. Say, Oh Jesus, tell us what church you belong to. Are you an Anglican? or a Lutheran, or a Presbyterian, or a Jehovah's Witness, or a Seventh-day Adventist, what are you? What, what church you belong to? <laughs> ridiculous, we agree. It's a ridiculous thing. What will he say? What is the name of your religion, O Jesus? Tell us. And he will tell us that my religion is a religion of total submission to God's will. One word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. Islam means a religion of total submission to God's will. God says only Islam. Christianity is your creation. Where did the term come from? It is in the New Testament. That the enemies of the followers of Jesus, disparagingly they pointed to them at Antioch, and for the first time they used the term that these are Christians, meaning the worshippers of Christ. And the Christians like the term so they adopted it, from which we get Christianity. Christian Christianity was a term coined, invented by the enemies of the followers of Jesus. You like the term, you take it. You see, in my country, people call other people names. They call them names. Among the whites who are ruling the country, the, the majority are English and Afrikaner. The Afrikaner calls the Englishman Ruinek. Ruinek means rednecks. What they are trying to say is that this guy is a softy, he's effeminate. When he goes in the sun for a little while, he gets red in the neck. You know, he's a soft guy. That's what he means. It's a Ruinek. It means he's a softy. You know, effeminate chap. We are the boorers. You ask the Englishman, the Englishman says he's a boorer. Boorer means a farmer. But now, if you ask the Afrikaner what he is, he says, I'm a boorer, it means I'm a farmer. Nothing wrong with it. But when the Englishman calls him a boorer, he gets offended. Because when he says boorer, he's trying to imply that he's backward, rustic, farmer, uneducated barbarian. Though he himself says, I'm a boorer, but an English-speaking person says he's a boorer, meaning he is backward. But they call each other names. They call the colored community hot knots, means hot and tots. They call my people coolies, laborers. They call the Africans kaffirs. But now if you like the term, you adopt it. No Indian goes around in South Africa boasting I'm a coolie. No colored goes around boasting I'm a hot knot. No boorer goes around boasting I'm a boorer in the sense of a backward rustic. And no Englishman goes around boasting we are ruinecks. But if you like the term, the choice is yours. The Christian made the choice, they liked what the enemies called them, and they accepted it. But the religion of Jesus, 
according to the definition he will give us, that my religion is a religion of total submission to God's will. One word for that in the Arabic language is Islam. And he is a Muslim. The Quran describes Jesus as a Muslim, his disciples as Muslims. What does it mean? That they followed Muhammad? No, they didn't hear the term Muhammad. Then what does Muslim mean? Muslim means one who has submitted his will to the will of God. Anyone who submits his will to the will of God, the Quran says Abraham was a Muslim, Moses was a Muslim, David, Solomon and Jesus were Muslims, Muhammad was a Muslim, and anyone, everyone who submits his will to the will of God is a Muslim. In the Garden of Gethsemane, we see this submission by Jesus which qualifies him to be called a Muslim per excellence. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, according to the New Testament, and he tells his disciples, wait and watch, meaning keep guard. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed to God, said, oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass away from me, meaning remove the difficulty from me, but not as I will, but as thou wilt. The expression, not, but not as I will, what I want, but as thou wilt. Whatever you want me to, me to do, whatever you want me to go through, oh my Lord, I am prepared to submit. The word for that in Arabic is aslama, submitting. He is a Muslim who has submitted. So Jesus was a Muslim, Moses was a Muslim, and if each and every one of us, we are prepared to submit to the will and plan of God, you are all Muslims. There is no such thing as Judaism, and there is no such thing as Christianity in the official books of the religion. Therefore, I say that there is no Judaism and no Christianity. But in the teachings, I say that actually there is no difference. In the fundamental principle of the teaching of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, there is not an iota of difference, not one dot. I said in the fundamentals of the teachings of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, even as recorded today in the Christian Bible, there is not an iota of difference. And I prove it to you. We want to know from the Jews. What is the first commandment? The most important thing in your faith. The first commandment, what is it? So he would tell you in the Hebrew language. If he knows, I asked an elderly Jew. I said, now, do you know the Shama? We say the Shahada. They say the Shama. I said, do you know the Shama? He said, my wife knows it at home. I said, no, no, I want to know whether you know it. <laughs> However, the Shema is the Shahada of the Jew as given out, uttered by the Holy Prophet Moses. The Shema Israel Adonai Elohainu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Some 1,300 years after Moses, Jesus Christ is on the scene. He is trying to reclaim his people, bring them out of formalism, ceremonialism, into the truth of God. Make them to accept the letter and the spirit. They are going for the letter of the law. They had forgotten the spirit. And as a reformer among the Jews, we believe as the Messiah, he had come to reclaim them, put them back onto the path. But his preaching, when he preached, the Jews, they thought something otherwise, that this man has brought another religion. Because the way he preached, he didn't preach like the other Jews. The other Jews always said, it is written, Moses said this, it is written, Isaiah said this, it is written, Malak, Jeremiah.